Dear students, in this class, we will discuss about the mechanism of replication of DNA. And in that one, the first part, we have to know what are the different enzymes involved. Now, I listed the different types of enzymes. Number one, DNA polymerase. The enzyme responsible for the polymerization process, the elongation of the newly formed DNA strand by the addition of nucleotides. Now, if you are taking prokaryotes like bacteria, there are three different types of DNA polymerases. They are named as polymerase 1, polymerase 2 and polymerase 3. Generally speaking, in the case of prokaryotes, the polymerase 3 is the main enzyme responsible for DNA replication. The remaining two are involved in that is what is called the process of repair or also involved in what is called proofreading. That is in the case of prokaryotes. If you are reading that is in eukaryotes, there are five different types of enzymes as per the DNA polymerase is concerned. Alpha, beta, delta, epsilon and gamma. So the alpha is nothing but polymerase 1, the beta is nothing but polymerase 2 and delta is nothing but polymerase 3 and epsilon and finally gamma. Out of these five DNA polymerases, the four of them are present inside the nucleus. They are concerned with actually that is what we call replication within the, within the nucleus, replication of DNA. That's why called nuclear DNA polymerases. Now the last one, gamma, this is formed only in the case of mitochondria, concerned with only the repair and not replication process. Because in the case of mitochondria, it is a single standard, what is called the DNA, which is normally being actually converted to by process of replication, but we are taking it upon mainly that is concerned with what is called the repair of DNA. So these are the five different types of DNA polymerases in eukaryotes. These polymerase enzymes are responsible for polymerization of nucleotides by adding the nucleotide to the new strand at 3 as hydroxyl group. So during the replication process, now the nucleotides are added one by one to the 3 as end of what is called the carbon. Three does end of the column. So this is what is happening. That's why the three dash hydroxyl group is always free to which the nucleotides are added one by one. Okay, the three dash refers to the column atom of the sugar. Okay, now, now actually, what will happen? The synthesis of DNA occurs very fastly and accurately. If any error occurs, that results in mutation. But the error is normally corrected by means of that is what is called proofreading or by means of what is called repair with the help of DNA polymerase. In that case, the DNA polymerase is acting as an exonucleus activity. Exonucleus is always involved in removal of peptonucleotide. So, the error is being corrected by means of DNA polymerase once again particularly for example 1, 2, even also epsilon. By means of error correction, proofreading, the error is corrected with the activity of DNA polymerase. Here it acts as an exonucleus. It acts as an exonucleus. So this is what is happening. The error is being corrected because of the exonucleus activity of that is polymerase enzyme. So, number one, DNA polymerase concerned with the elongation of the newly formed DNA strand. What is helicase? For synthesis of new strand, you know, the two strands should be separate by breaking the covalent hydrogen bonds between them. Then only we have the two strands get separated and each one is acting as a template for the synthesis of what is called a new strand. And for breaking the hydrogen bond, suppose this is what we have actually, the two strands. The two strands being separated from one another by the activity of helicase enzyme. So helicase enzyme is responsible for breaking the hydrogen bonds covalently 
just at the covalent bond between the hydrogens are actually sorry, between the bases the covalent hydrogen bonds between the bases either between A and T or just between just G and C normally the break occurs first at the point where we have A is forming a pair with the T where you have only two hydrogen bonds it is easy to break the hydrogen bonds at that point between A and T so helicase is an enzyme responsible for breaking the hydrogen bonds and also for separating the two strands so while separation is going on now still we have some super coins suppose we are taking the DNA molecule now the helicase enzyme separates the two molecules now again the separation occurs by the activity of helicase this is the, by the activity of helicase and now we have a formation of fork-like structure what is called replication fork now this is called replication fork and above this replication fork or high end of the replication fork still we have a coil that coil above the replication fork is called super coil this is called super coil here they are still not related now this enzyme topoisomerase is responsible for relieving the super coil above the replication fork so relieving what is called the tension between the two strands so that the helicase enzyme breaks the hydrogen bonds easily so topoisomerase is responsible for relieving what is called the tension or strain on the what is called actually the super coils lying above the replication fork or we can say hanging of the replication fork that is the topoisomerase now in the case of prokaryotes the topoisomerase has another name that is called gyrase so gyrase is nothing but what we have the topoisomerase another name of topoisomerase in the case of prokaryotes now DNA ligase ligation means putting what is called a stitching now what is happening while just actually synthesis occurs between the two strands the antis template so in one <coughs> sorry in one strand the synthesis occurs continuously in another strand the synthesis occurs discontinuously as broken segments now later the broken segments are joined together ligated together or linked together by the activity of DNA ligase so during replication one new strand is synthesized continuously one strand is synthesized discontinuously the discontinuous strands normally sorry is formed of just the fragments called bogus monkey fragments we'll talk about later and these fragments are joined together to form a complete DNA molecule by DNA ligase that's about that one now the next one primates this is an enzyme now the DNA replicates have some trouble in the starting of replication so it needs the help of actually a small segment of RNA so normally we need a primer a stretch of RNA that is needed for the initiation of replication suppose we have this is a segment of what is called RNA this is called RNA primer because DNA polymerase cannot initiate the replication process on its own. It needs the help of an enzyme, what is called primer, sorry, primase, that normally produces a stretch of RNA, that is called RNA primer. Later it will be normally removed while proofreading, that is different. So the enzyme which is involved for the synthesis or the production of RNA primer, a small stretch of RNA, to initiate the replication process, is primase so the primase is normally produced in both the newly synthesized what we have the strands with the activity of mainly this polymerase 1 the polymerase 1 is responsible for the addition of primate addition of primer to what is called both the newly synthesized segments and with the help of enzyme primase so this is about the different enzymes what we have Let's talk about the mechanism of a replication.
As I already mentioned, in the case of prokaryotes, there are three types of DNA polymerase. One, two, and three. The polymerase enzyme one, DNA polymerase one, is called Kohlenbeck enzyme. So normally we are using the word DNA polymerase. I am writing shortly DNA polymerase one, that is called Kohlenbeck enzyme. And DNA polymerase 2, these two enzymes in prokaryotes are involved in a process of repair. And whereas the enzyme polymerase 3, otherwise called the delta enzyme, responsible for replication process. Now in eukaryotes, I mentioned there are five different types of DNA polymerases responsible for the polymerization process. Now they add the nucleotides to the newly synthesized strand and what we have 3 dash hydroxyl group. That means the nucleotides are added to the 3 dash hydroxyl group and not to the 5 dash. So 3 dash hydroxyl group. Very fast and accurate. If there is any just actually error that results in I mentioned already mutation. So the error can be corrected by means of the mechanism with the help of DNA polymerase. For example DNA polymerase 2 and the epsilon, these are all the enzymes involved in the process of repair. They have the exonuclease activity. Exonuclease activity means the one responsible for the removal of that is the nucleotides with the mutation. Now, the energy for replication is provided by deoxytriphosphate. Now, this deoxytriphosphate see that one either GTP or ATP or we have TTP or CTP and these are all what we have the deoxytriphosphates they have dual functions they act as a substrate they act as a substrate for the formation of the polyelectric chain also provided energy for the synthesis of DNA okay now for Actually, the DNA replication has to start. We need the site called the site of origin of replication. The site of origin of replication. And before that, if you are taking, for example, the rate of polymerization, the rate of polymerization, in the case of uh, E. coli, that is, polymerization is completed in E. coli, having the base number or just actually number of base pairs. 4.6 into 10 power 6 and that is completed within 38 minutes. In the case of eukaryote, so this is the whole that is a formation of DNA replication with base pass number 4.6 into 10 power 6. That is a 38 minutes. If you are taking the rate of polymerization per second, 200 nucleotides are added per second. This is the rate of polymerization per second. 200 nucleotides are added to the new strand resulting in the polymerization process leading to the DNA replication. So this is the reference to E. coli. This is the rate of polymerization in the case of in the case of eukaryotic cells. So we have 200 base pairs per second added to the newly formed that is strand. Now for the replication has to take place. We need a site. The site is called origin of replication. The site is called origin of replication. Origin of replication. This is called O or I. Origin of replication. In the case of E. coli bacterium, the DNA is circular. DNA is circular. There is only one origin of replication. There is only one origin of replication. But in the case of eukaryotes, as the DNA is linear molecule, we have more origin of replications. Not one, more origins of replications. That is the difference between E. coli bacterium and also in the case of eukaryotes. Now let's go for it. So, what happened? So the DNA replication takes place. But in the case of prokaryotes, it is very easy because it is a circular molecule. But in the case of there is eukaryotes, as the DNA is a macromolecule, a giant molecule, so we cannot just take the replication process through simultaneously at the same time. 
So replication doesn't occur simultaneously throughout the length. So that a small opening is formed in the DNA double strand to just stop the process of replication and that opening is called replication fork. We'll talk about later about this one. Replication fork. So as a giant molecule, we have to start the replication. So because it is a giant molecule, it takes more energy. We cannot do the replication process continuously throughout the strand. So small opening is formed where we have the origin of replication, a fork-like structure is formed and that is called replication fork. Now during the replication process, we have the following structures are formed. Now we know that one, DNA polymerase enzyme for polymerization. First, at the origin of replication, we have the DNA helicases and that normally just separate the two strands. Now here, I am representing, see that one, this one is helicase, the enzyme. Helicase enzyme, responsible for separating the DNA two strands by breaking the covalent hydrogen bonds. So this is a helicase enzyme. Still above the helicase enzyme, I mentioned there is a super coil. That super coil actually just preventing the replication, preventing the what is called unwinding of the two strands. So it relieves tension so that the helicase enzyme breaks what is called the hydrogen bonds. The covalent bond is broken between what we call the bases. Now this is what is called topoisomerase. I mentioned already topoisomerase enzyme. This is topoisomerase. And these two are the parallel strands or we can say the super coil. I'm taking that one super coil. Super coils. So responsible for the super coils are being normally just relieved by topoisomerase. The tension is released so that the hydrogen bond between the two strands being broken with the helicase. Now, I mentioned just so the DNA synthesis occurs. So at the point where the origin of replication occurs, we have what is called the two strands are pulled apart and giving a Y-shaped structure. This Y-shaped structure is called replication fork. This is the replication fork. This is because of the separation of two strands. As the two strands are actually pulled apart due to the activity of topoisomerase and helicase, we have formed the replication fork, the Y-shaped structure. Now gradually, normally you see that what the replication normally proceeds. Now, in the case of DNA replication, there are two DNA template strands. The two strands get separated and each one is acting as a template. Now template 1. So it is running in 3 dash, 5 dash direction. And this template strand is acting as a template for leading strand. Leading strand just running in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. So template 1. So this is what is called the template 1. What I am writing this one. This is a template 1 running in 3 dash, 5 dash direction. You see that one 3 dash, 5 dash direction. So this is also the running point from 3 dash to 5 dash. So template 1, 3 dash, 5 dash direction. It is acting as a template for leading strand which runs in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. I will tell you what it may leading strand. And another one template 2. So this is template 1. I am taking template 2. Template 2. This is a strand, what we can say, template 1 strand and template 2 strand. Acting as a model for the synthesis of new strand. So template 2 strand, this is running in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. For lagging strand, this is a template for lagging strand. 
which is also running in 5 dash 3 dash direction. Okay, so in the template strand 2, that is what we have the template 5 dash 3 dash, and the direction of replication is also 5 dash 3 dash. Now, replication always proceeds in 5 dash 3 dash direction. Replication always proceeds in 5 dash 3 dash direction because we have the new nucleotides are added or polymerized to the new strand only at the 3 carbon where you have hydroxy put up is there. There is no addition of what is called this new polypeptides to the new strand at the 5 dash direction. Only the removal of PHM, that is polynucleotides, sorry, nucleotides occur at the 5 dash strand. There is no addition. I tell you the addition why removal. So here the addition of nucleotides to the new strand occurs to the free third carbon with hydroxyl group. That's why it's always proceeding in 5 dash, means 3 dash direction, never in 3 dash, 5 dash direction. Now the template 1, now this is template 1. You see this one, this is template 2. This is template 2. So it is only you see that one 5 dash, 3 dash direction. In this direction only half to represent. And here also mentioned just 3 dash, 5 dash. This is a template strand for the strand which is synthesized continuously. Now, this is what is called the leading strand. I'll tell you what is the meaning. Leading strand. And this is called the lagging strand. This is called lagging strand. Now, the strand which is synthesized continuously is called, actually the strand which is synthesized continuously is called as a leading strand. See, one of the two strands during replication being synthesized continuously, that is called the leading strand. And another strand which is not synthesized continuously, otherwise called as a discontinuous strand, called the lagging strand. Now, it is in the form of broken fragments. The broken fragments are called Okasaki fragments. The broken fragments are called Okasaki fragments. I am writing here. Somewhere you have right. Okay now. So I am writing here later now. The labeling part. I am coming back this one. So one template strand is running 3 dash, 5 dash direction. For the synthesis of the continuous strand. Other is called the leading strand. Another template strand is in 5 dash, 3 dash direction responsible for the synthesis of a discontinuous strand, otherwise called the lagging strand. This is about the template strand. We will go for other structures. One of the strands is synthesized continuously called the leading strand. The direction of the leading strand is always towards the replication fork. You see that one, it is running towards the replication fork. The template for this strand, the parallel strand, running in 3 dash, 5 dash direction. You see, starting from here towards this end. This is the, what is called the direction. Another strand is synthesized discontinuously. That strand is called as a lagging strand. It is being synthesized in the form of broken fragments. Such fragments are called Okasaki fragments. Such fragments are called Okasaki fragments. So, the direction of synthesis of lagging strand is away from the replication form. So, the replication of the two strands, the synthesis of new strands, that is leading and lagging strand occurs, that is in opposite direction. The leading strand towards the replication form and the lagging strand is away from the replication form. Now, the template strand for the lagging strand is running from 5 dash 3 dash. Just here, starting from here towards this direction. Okay, this is number 1. Now, what is happening? So, as these two strands are moving away from each other, the nucleotides, the newly synthesized nucleotides, are paired with the existing nucleotides on the parallel strand. That's why we have formed the new strand. Now, what's happening? The DNA polymerase cannot initiate the replication process on its own. It needs a helper. So, the helper is nothing but actually a small stretch of RNA called RNA primer. So, at the starting point, we see that one here. This is this RNA primer. 
the blue color one and this is nothing but a small stretch of RNA at the origin of replication it's being normally just produced by enzyme the primase now this is the primase so the primer is produced on both the strands with the help of RNA that is primase and that resulted in the formation of a primer the starting point now actually what will happen at the point of origin we have the primary stretch of RNA nucleotide now to which only so we have actually this RNA primer produces that is free what is called 3 dash hydroxyl group 3 dash hydroxyl group which is free to which the DNA nucleotides are added that is deoxy ribonucleotides are added at this end that is why it is always free so the primer produces actually that is what we have the primase produces a stretch of RNA what is called primer having what is called free carbon with hydroxyl group at the third position to which one day the deoxy nucleotides are added there is no addition of nucleotides in the new strands at 5 dash that's fine the direction of synthesis always occurs only in 5 dash 3 dash direction either in the case of lagging strand or in the case of lagging strand in both the cases we have the direction of replication is 5 dash 3 dash see here the leading this is what is called 5 dash and this is 3 dash n this is the newly synthesized leading strand likewise this is what is called 5 dash and this is what we have 3 dash in the case of lagging strand so both being synthesized in that direction once actually the segments that is what we have the new strands are synthesized the RNA primer is removed as a result what will happen a gap is formed in the newly synthesized strand now actually the RNA nucleotide is removed from the 5 dash end see here it is removed from the 5 dash end so the RNA primer is removed the nucleotides at the 5 dash end and that is DNA nucleotide is added to the 3 dash end that's why we have the direction of synthesis always in 5 dash 3 dash so the RNA primer the nucleate is removed one by one from the 5 dash end and we have the additional deoxy nucleotides added to the 3 dash end so one is removed at one end and another is added so removal of ribonucleotides at the 5 dash end and the addition of deoxy nucleotides at the 3 dash end so a continuous synthesis is formed at the same time the primer is removed leaving a gap so the gap is filled once all the nucleotides are in position now the gap is sealed by means of an enzyme what is called DNA linkage. DNA linkage. So the DNA linkage is responsible for sealing the gap that is left by the removal of RNA primer. By proofreading, we see that when I mentioned RNA, we have the removal of what is called the nucleotides for RNA and then addition of nucleotides for DNA. So the gap is filled. This is being done with the help of DNA linkage. Now, as you see that one, the two enzymes, the topoisomerase and helicase, responsible for just keeping the two strands away from each other, we have the formation of replication for which is Y shaped. Now, what will happen? You see at the end. Now, the two strands are being synthesized. Now, the ocus on the fragments which are discontinuous what will happen they are being joined together with the help of enzyme that is DNA linkage so we have two DNA molecules are formed from this parallel one one each one is with a strand of parallel one and a newly synthesized one showing the semi-conservative method of replication semi-conservative method of replication 
So remember that one, the continuous strand is synthesized towards application 4. And the discontinuous strand is synthesized towards what is called or away from the replication 4 or the towards the terminal end. So in both the cases, though the template strands are different, the direction of synthesis of what is called the new strand is always in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. I told you the reason why. This is because of the addition of deoxynucleotides to the third position of the carbon atom and never at the position of the fifth carbon. So we have the addition only at the third carbon. So the direction is always in 5 dash, 3 dash direction in both conditions, though they are being synthesized discontinuous. Now you can find here the primer. So we have RNA primer. In the case of discontinuous strand, many RNA primers are then quite a recruited because the DNA is being synthesized discontinuously. At every point, when a new fragment is synthesized, a new primer is added. So the discontinuous synthesis employs, that is what we have, or recruits many RNA primers as the synthesis occurs at broken intervals. Whereas in the case of continuous strand, it recruits and employs only one RNA primer. That too I mentioned only one RNA primer here. And here I mentioned the groups. They represent many RNA primers recruited by the synthesis of discontinuous strand. So the DNA replication is a discontinuous or also we can say semi-conservative and semi-discontinuous or semi-continuous replication. Semi-conservative, semi-discontinuous replication or semi-conservative, semi that is continuous replication because semi-conservative one parent strand, one new strand. And again if you are taking what is called that is continuous strand, one is produced continuously, another one is produced discontinuously, that is we can say semi continuous or semi-discontinuous replication. So there is one of the points you have to remember. The template strand is always running from one terminal end towards that direction. So this is the template strand starting from that is 3 dash to 5 dash and also here 5 dash to 3 dash. So remember those actually the enzymes which are involved and also the nature of the template strand which will be asked in the first paper in one word answer which is the template strand for the leading strand. Which is the template strand? for what we have that is a discontinuous strand. So the fragments are called opacity fragments. They are joined together with the help of enzyme DNA linkage. I mentioned this red spot. They are joining these fragments to form a complete fragment or complete strand. So now we have one DNA molecule gets converted to two DNA molecules. Okay? That's over. Thank you.